We're here today to talk about the reputation management redesign. So uh, as many of you may know, you might have received emails and seen uh, some notifications here that reputation management is getting a facelift. We just want to, to you know, walk through that facelift with you today, give you the opportunity to see it and uh, give you the opportunity to ask questions and be really involved here today. So we're really excited to, to bring this to you. So, as mentioned, my name is Zach Huzdebski. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Reputation Management. Um, and I'm really excited to be here today. It's a pleasure being on uh, my first Vendasta weekly webinar. And uh, I appreciate everyone who's joined us here today. To my right, I've got Lonnie Seegers. <laughs> Hey everyone, um, so I'm the product designer for Reputation Management, so I'm excited to kind of be here with Zach and answer any design questions you guys might have about this facelift. All right, so as you guys are, are likely aware of, and we've we sent out some messaging, but uh, next week you will be, everyone will have general release, will have full access to the new Reputation Management look and feel. So on Wednesday, December 5th, uh, all Vendasta partners will receive access to this. And really what that means is um, over the last few years, you know, we've, we've taken feedback from our 1400 partner network for this product. And in, in recent weeks and months, we've worked very closely with a uh, select few partners and groups of trusted testers to deliver a new look and feel to you and your clients. And uh, we're very, very excited to bring this to you guys. We think that this modern look and feel is uh, is something that you know the product uh, it needs and we're re really excited to deliver it. So what is the change? Well, as we mentioned, it's a, it's a complete redesign to the look, to the feel of Vendasta's reputation management. And being that I am not the, uh, the designer here, I'm gonna get Lonnie to jump in and kind of talk about some of the big differences or not big differences, but noticeable differences that you'll, you'll uh, recognize moving from the old or legacy interface into this newer interface. Okay, so it was really important to us that we didn't really kind of disturb your guys' current workflows when going, or yours or your client's workflows when going through this product. So we really wanted to make sure that current users of the product could still get in there and they're still kind of familiar with what's going on. So this is more so of, like we said before, a facelift to kind of modernize it and make it a look, look a little bit better, um, more up with the times. But there is a few things that have changed. And so the biggest things will be the navigation. So the navigation is now to the left, which when we get into the, the walkthrough of the product, you'll notice. Um, and then the next thing is we've added something called a contextual help drawer. So in the old rep, you can even see on this page, there's these little tool tips kind of thrown everywhere across the page. Um, and what we've done is added a help drawer to the, to the side. And again, we'll get into it in the walkthrough that kind of compiles that information for you. And it, it makes it a bit better of a user journey rather than having to kind of explore through the product and find these hidden tool tips everywhere. Um, yeah, so that's what I was talking about, the tool tips there. Um, but yeah, I'll explain this more when we get into the walkthrough and kind of show you guys a few examples of how this is gonna help out. Oh yes, that's the, that's the new navigation as I, as I said before. Um, and then the next is the, yes. So that's where you're gonna be finding all of your contextual help in the product now. So just to sum up, the biggest differences are the, the navigation, it's now um, a sidebar. The tool tips, they've all been wrapped into a contextual help drawer. Um, and then some of the other differences that we're gonna get into when we go through the walkthrough, just cause they'll make more sense to you guys to actually see, um, are the filters. The filters, we've kind of uh, put them in a centralized spot as well. Um, perhaps one of the most exciting updates is mobile functionality. So I don't know if any of you guys have tried to use reputation management as it is now on a mobile device, but it's not very friendly. So um, the new reputation will be mobile friendly, so you'll be able to kind of use it on the go and use it on um, smartphones and tablets. Um, and another very exciting change is page speed has increased dramatically, which should really um, improve your guys' quality of life. Um, and of course, just the modern look and feel. So without further ado, we're not just gonna go through this slide deck here. We are gonna jump right into a live demo. So we're gonna take you through uh, one of Indasta's test accounts. Now this test account is for a business, a local restaurant in New York City. 
and we'll kind of walk through the product with you guys. If it's been a while since you've had a full deep dive of reputation management, please ask questions. That's what we're here for. And uh, for those of you that are, are just looking forward to checking out the new user interface, this is a great opportunity to, to dive into all the tabs and sub tabs and really get a feel to it. So yeah, I'm just going to add, we are going to do a, a Q&A at the end, but feel free if you guys have any questions as we're going through um, any of this, go ahead and ask away and we'll try to kind of address them while we're still in that page or context. All right, so when you enter reputation management, what you would see on the old uh, interfaces is an overview page. And much like that, we've, we've brought that overview page and we've, we've brought everything um, from, the, from the old interface into the new interface. We try and make this process from moving to the old to the new um, very, very seamless, easy to use if you're, if you're familiar with the older product. But we, we bring a whole new design, a whole new feel so, you know, tabs are still mentioned the same. Um, our language is still being used the same, but uh, we deliver something that's snappier, it's faster, obviously mobile friendly and something that uh, we think that you will definitely like to, to bring to your clients. Now, so when we jump into the overview page, you can see that we've got these, these cards here. We've got the review summary, and that's going to be a, a very good summary of that reviews tab here. You've got review top review sites, your listing score, and depending on your score, your, your graph will be differently. So we, we'll show you this listing score later and we'll see why that there's, there's two lines there, but we can talk about that. But it'll sum up your listing score, your listing accuracy, um, you versus your local presence versus your competitors, summing up the competitive tab, and then the mentions tab summed up too. So uh, we feel that the overview page with these different separate cards does a really good job of creating quick summaries to uh, to sum up the tabs instead of having to dive in and spend all of your time in here if you want to show a client kind of a high level if they only have a few seconds or minutes they can come right to this page and and get a uh, a good idea so i got a we've got a question here when will the ability to flip to the old design expire so you can see here we've got this back to the original design button and the reason that we've kept that for the time being so as, as mentioned, we're going to roll this out on Wednesday, December 5th. Now, on Wednesday, December 5th, if you've got clients who uh, are more comfortable working in the old user interface or um, if you're not quite prepared to, to flip um, your accounts or you want to do something within the old interface, you can click this button and it will take you back to the original design. Now, we have not set a date that we're going to um, take this away or expire it, but we want the ability for now, as we are transitioning with uh, an older interface to a newer interface, to, uh, to be able to, to, to play with both. Um, for, for the sake of, uh, of just flow here, so we'll, we'll answer some of the questions as they come up. Uh, we've got some questions about listings and we'll definitely get those answers to you either um, either now or we'll reach out to you right after the webinar. So we're going to jump into the reviews tab right now. So as you can see, once you open the reviews tab, uh, you've got your average rating summed up in this card against the industry average, your total reviews, your rating breakdown, so your five stars, your four stars, three stars, and so on. And of course, something that everyone uh, really seems to enjoy in the product is this word cloud. Um, and now the power of the word cloud really is it's, uh, it's scraping the language of the reviews online and it's finding out, you know, positive or negative uh, sentiment within reviews. So if someone's mentioning uh, the lamb burger and that's a staple to the Breslin, this restaurant we're looking at in New York, someone's looking at the lamb burger and they're leaving a lot of good four and five star reviews. That's going to show up on your word cloud in a big green letters. And that means that you know most reviews that are associated with the lamb burger are really, really good reviews. Now I'll let kind of Lonnie talk about the design elements here before we get in sure, a little yeah. bit further. Um, and just to, to answer a, qu a question from Jordana here, um, the request to reviews button will not show up if you do not have customer voice. So if you guys are familiar with our customer voice product, that button will only appear in reputation management um, if you do have or if you do have customer voice, and it's just a, a way to quickly. Um, transition into that other product. Um, so in terms of the design of the, the Manage Reviews tab here, so a few things that I've mentioned before and you'll probably notice is 
the filtering. So filters for all tabs are now located in the same spot and that's in this top right hand corner up here. Um, you can toggle it on and off to make more space. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's centrally located for, for all products, or sorry, for all tabs. Um, and also another thing to note is this help drawer that we were talking about before. So the contents of this help drawer changes based on what tab, that, what tab you're on. Um, and this just provides more information, more in-depth information um, that'll really help you or your clients kind of navigate through the, through the page. And so I just want to address one more question there from, from Tim. Uh, Tim had asked if there's a new video to go along with the updates. The answer to that question is yes. We will have that video uh, by the end of the week up in the Resource Center. And basically, you know, what you get out of the old video, um, we're going to be re replicating that, bringing it into the new interface, and uh, for the time being, uh, keep vo both videos available for, for you in the Resource Center. So um, that will be available for you. So. Uh, one thing I kind of wanted to touch on is if you wanted to explore this word cloud uh, further and dig into maybe some of the negative men or negative reviews, um, you can filter this word cloud by particular words. So you can see that the Lamberger maybe isn't getting all rave reviews. There are some negative reviews about the, the Lamberger, but if you type in horrible, uh, it's going to pull in reviews that are associated with the word horrible. So um, horrible service, it looks like uh, we're pulling in reviews here that are showing obviously mostly negative uh, experiences. Now, if you were looking to respond to an experience like this, simply hit the respond button, uh, type out your review response and, uh, and definitely get into posting that and, and dealing with those um, reviews online. Now, one thing that we do notice a lot of people like to do when they have hundreds or even thousands of reviews is they like to set the status of that review. So, you know, once, once you've uh, responded, you're actually going to hit respond and it's going to leave that tag there. Or if you haven't got to review, you're going to have a tag that said action required. So it means that you haven't yet uh, visited that review or dealt with that review. But once you have, you can hit responded. Um, and if, you know, if you're not dealing with, uh, all of the three-star reviews that come in say, you might just put no action required. Now, another option through here is sharing the review. Say you have a five-star review uh, or a four-star or a review, review that you really want to show off. Um, maybe you want to post that to your social channels. You can hit share and you can share this straight to social. Um, as well, you can see that there's unpublished from the review widget. Uh, we'll, we'll dig into the review widget just shortly here, but uh, I will, I'll just kind of describe what that means. Um, the review widget will be pulling some of the reviews to your website. And if you don't want to showcase one of those, you can take them off uh, directly here as well. Just going back to the, um, the filters there for a second. Um, so one more thing about these filters is they do affect everything on the page. So if you, for say, for example, just want to drill into your Google reviews, if you click on Google, you'll see kind of everything on the page changing. Um, so you can see your individual star rating, how many reviews you have on Google, what you know, the most common um, top keywords are in your Google reviews. Um, and you, so, yeah, you'll see everything on the page kind of change based on these filters that you have to the right. Um, and like Zach was saying before with the status, you can also say you marked a bunch of your reviews for as action required. You can um, go ahead and filter afterwards and go ahead and do whatever action you were hoping to do um, with those reviews. We do have a few more questions here. So Chantal asked, will responses post directly to Google if you publish them from the platform or do you need to sign in again? As long as you have an authenticated Google um, account on your reputation account, it will post directly from the platform. So you won't have to sign in again to, to get them to go to Google. And for this question is about Jordan, Jordan, you ask about uh, the a API connection. I can, uh, I'll get you that information after um, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll reach out to you. As far as Malcolm, you ask, uh, does customer voice open in a new browser tab? When you click request reviews, that's correct. Yeah, you will be taken into a new tab into the customer voice product if you have it. Now I wanna point out what we're talking about for those of you that don't have customer voice. Uh, customer voice is Vendasta's product that uh, helps you bring in more reviews, whether that be SMS requests or email requests. 
If you have that enabled and activated in the Vendasta marketplace, you'll see this call to action and this button here for requesting reviews within your reputation management product. So Rick kind of asks a question that's a good segue here. Um, what is the review widget? I'd love to have that for my customer's website. So that's a, that is a good segue. We'll jump into the review widget. I know I was talking about it before, but it's just on your uh, left-hand side there, and it's the review display widget. So when we go into here, you can see that it's, uh, it's customizable. If you want to match it to your client's brand colors, um, you can do so here. Now, what this widget does is it gives you a piece of code that you can copy into your client's websites. And what will show up on your client's websites with this piece of code is the review display widget. So it's gonna show off all of these great reviews um, on their website front and center. And uh, definitely, I think, you know, a lot of businesses, including the business we're looking at, who has a lot of awesome five, four and five star reviews, it's, uh, it's really important to showcase, you know, how great your customer service is. And I think that um, this is a really, really big win for a lot of small businesses. As, as small as it may be within this product, I think it can create a lot of value. So I'm glad you asked that. And yeah, that's, that's the review uh, display widget right there. And this is the um, the types of reviews that get displayed on there is customizable. We'll get that in, into that a little bit more as we get into the settings. Um, but yeah, you can control uh, which star rating, which star rated reviews get put into the review display widget. So diving into the statistics sub tab, you can see that these graphs are interactive. So as you uh, go month by month, you can see the average review rating say for April twenty eighteen. Um, Maybe you had a couple great promos in July of 2018 and you noticed that there was a correlation in the reviews that you have. Of course, you can look at the total reviews to see which reviews were deemed neutral, negative, or positive. And, you know, maybe you had a, a month where you were in between uh, a manager at a restaurant, you know, a new hire or something. That might reflect uh, directly in these reviews. You know, maybe it was a slower month and your service wasn't as prompt as it usually is you might see that show up here and it's a good place to dig in. As well, you can see that there's industry averages compared to the total. And what those industry averages are is they're away from, Vendasta breaks down all of the data and the, the million businesses that we have in our system. We break them down by taxonomy and then we create this, this industry average, um, this number. And so for a, a lot of businesses, it's very insightful you know, to see, obviously the Breslin here, this restaurant that we're looking at, has much more than the industry average. So they're doing a really good job at getting reviews and they're getting a lot of reviews, but uh, their average isn't quite as high. So, you know, it's very, it is very insightful. A lot of small business owners and your clients, it's something that they really, really like to look into. Now you can, of course, filter this as well. So we're gonna dive into the listings tab here. Now pulling the listings tab, uh, you'll see the listing score front and center. And slow me down here, Lonnie, if, uh, if I am going too fast. Um, Lonnie's gonna keep an eye on the questions and we're gonna keep it rolling. We do wanna be time sensitive here. I know there's gonna be a lot of questions. And if we don't get to your question uh, on the webinar here, please uh, know that we're, we didn't miss it. We're gonna take a look at these and we'll definitely help to answer everyone's questions, um, whether it be online on the webinar here today or reach out to you personally. Yeah, we're going to kind of try to keep questions that are um, that make sense to the tab around, but we will have a kind of a, as long as we have time, we'll have a Q&A at the end. Um, and if we don't get to your question, like Zach said, we'll reach out to you after the webinar. Awesome. So we'll keep rolling here with the listings tab. So once you jump into the listings tab, you'll be in the primary listings tab. And the first thing you see is the listing score. Now, the listing score is graphed uh, towards your industry average and your 95th percentile. With this business, it's... It, we're showing an account, unfortunately, that had uh, activated um, their, their product and then deactivated. So you see two lines and it, it kind of looks strange. Now, for most businesses, what you're going to see is you're going to see an upward trend uh, upwards to the right um, as, as it works to, as you claim listings, you know, the score increases and, um, uh, and you can work towards that 95th percentile. Now, the listing information is all of the NAP data, the information, for the business and the reason that this is so important is this listing information is what matches uh, with the sources displayed below 
So this information that you have at the top uh, needs to match the different sources, search engines, review sites, social sites, in order for it to be deemed accurate. Now, the goal obviously for all small businesses and uh, for you when you're working with your clients is to have mo most of these be uh, green check marks. And obviously, uh, you, can, you can work towards you know, making them all green check marks. And of course, right now we're displaying 46 sources. We will show you as well in the settings tab how to add or, or subtract more sources, add different listing sources, depending on the taxonomy. So for example, for a restaurant, you're probably gonna unclick cars.com. It's not gonna be super relevant, but you're gonna definitely want uh, sites like TripAdvisor, OpenTable, Yelp, and Zomato. So let's take a look here at the accurate reviews, you know, the reviews with possible errors and the not found uh, uh, listings. So you can see that obviously the Breslin has done a good job of, of pulling in accurate listings for a lot of their sources, but there are sources say like Indeed that are not found. Now what do you do when you come upon a listing that's not found? We're going to hit this drop down and what this drop down is going to do is it's going to allow you to explore possible matches. Now in this case, it is not finding any possible matches. So you can see that the listing is not being found at all. And of course, as I say that, we load up some possible matches. But say those aren't yours. You can directly create your listing and insert this URL once you've created a listing directly from these sites. Come back in here and submit that listing URL. Once you've submitted that URL, it'll give, uh, you know, within 24 hours, our system will understand that that URL um, that you had inputted is in fact yours, it's yours, you've claimed it, and it will show up as a uh, accurate listing found. Now, if you have, for example, listings found with possible errors, there's a couple reasons for it. Now, you can see here that, as I drop it down, of course, on the live demo here, we're seeing some, <laughs> some issues with the drop down. So it's something that we're definitely gonna iron out. Um, let's see if it's the same in super pages. What you're going to do is you're gonna say not yours to the listings that aren't matching your data correctly. And the listings that are, um, if there are in fact a couple listings, uh, will, will allow you to change that from accurate to, or from listings with possible errors to accurate. Now, the, what I'm saying when I say it's pulling a couple of possible errors is the system will pull um, associated businesses with similar addresses. It will pull in um, potential, you know, listing sites can have a potential for a couple different, you know, Breslin names. We noticed that uh, before on this uh, Dex Nose listing, it's pulling in a Breslin Noel, a medical doctor. So it's matching the name. So it's, it's thinking it's found the listing, but uh, you know, it has a possible error. But it, of course, the list, actual listing is there as well. So it's good to monitor to see you know, what the system's pulling. It's trying to recognize that listing information that you see at the top. And uh, it, needs, it needs your review to tell it whether it's finding the right thing or not. And if it isn't, that's where you submit that listing URL. So we have a few questions here in regards to the listings tab. Um, Brittany asks, any chance the letter grade will be incorporated into this new design? Uh, currently, there is no plans for that. Um, but that is some interesting feedback, um, Brittany. If you want to reach out to us after and just kind of tell us your reasoning, why you would want that letter grade, it's definitely something we can look into. Um, Leah asks, what's the gray page next to the green check mark? So that gray page there, um, means that there's a note left on that listing. So I don't, I think these are probably, we use this account for testing. So, oh, edited on 1208.14. So um, if you have any notes that you'd like to leave on a listing, um, maybe someone's gonna come in after and do some actions on these notes, that just indicates that there's a note on the listing um, and is an easy way to see. And a lot of times what people will do, uh, if they're going out and claiming a listing with a third party, Say you reach out to Indeed and you're working with that team at Indeed to, to create your listing. Um, they might make a note you know, in there that says, we've called Indeed and we're in the process of creating this listing. And so you know once you come in where you left off with that listing. So it's a good way to keep tabs on, on the different listing providers. 
and we have more, more talk on the letter grade. Um, the letter grade is a part of the snapshot report, um, and it, it's also part of the executive report. And like I said, there's no, no plans yet on pulling it into any of the products. Um, do we have any? I thought I saw another. Oh, we, have, um, we had a question about common business names. So if um, a business did input a common business name, um, if it does match that, then it will count that as a correct listing. For the sake of time, we've got uh, we got to keep rolling here. So we're going to jump into the listing sub tab. Uh, like we mentioned, though, we will try and get to everyone's questions, whether it be online or offline. Uh, we definitely appreciate all of the interaction here today, and we like that everyone's engaged. It's it's a really good sign for us. So, jumping into the citation sub tab, you can see that uh, there are a lot of websites, and this is pretty typical for restaurants, especially in big cities, that are referencing the Breslin. So. Uh, vacation idea, 20 best romantic restaurants in Chelsea, NYC. They're actually pointing, they're referring to this business's website. And this is pulling in citations, whether it be blog articles, news articles, um, social, anywhere on the web where, where that small business or your client's business is being referenced is counted as a citation. And it's really interesting, um, especially for your clients to, to dig into where they're being mentioned online, um, where they're being, uh, where, where citations are being found because a lot of times uh, they might not know that uh, a personal blog had mentioned their great or their horrible customer service uh, either or it's something that they might not stumble upon if it weren't for this citation sub tab. Uh, jumping into the statistics like I mentioned before this account had been deactivated and then activated so um, you can see that the listing score data is a little bit skewed but for those of you familiar with your listing score, you'll know that once you have that active, it does work over time as you complete listings work to, uh, to increase. Now your citations for, at least for Breslin, uh, for this restaurant have increased over time at a pretty consistent clip. Sorry, just one more, one more quick question to answer before we move away from listings. Um, Erica asks, will you at least show where they started with their listing score? The letter grade was helpful because they could easily see where they started. Um, and we will. So if you go to the overview page, Zach, um, you can see listing score started at on the bottom right hand corner of that listing score card. So you can see um, this business started at 97 um, and now they've improved to 878. So yes, we do show that started at. That's really good feedback. All right. So jumping into the competition tab, uh, you'll notice that, you know, this was obviously share of voice was something you saw in the old uh, interface and social audience, but we've brought it in uh, as a bit cleaner of a look. Now what your share of voice is, is it's representing uh, the competitive space which in lo within uh, a local search. So you can identify your, which competitors you want to see here and what kind of uh, referencing language you want to to see within local search and compare uh, the competitive landscape as well. You can dig into your social audience and I think a lot of people without uh, having to dig into their clients within um, Facebook or Twitter, they're able just to put their, their information in here and see how other uh, restaurants in the space are growing their audience or what kind of social tactics they're taking. So if I were the Breslin, I would find it really interesting here that you know, the Gramercy Tavern is obviously doing a really good job here in 2018 of growing their social audience in comparison to a lot of the restaurants in the space. And it might be even worthwhile to start looking at what that business is doing on Facebook, uh, what kind of posts they're, they're, they're taking or making and producing. And maybe it's they're posting specials and stuff. But uh, nonetheless, you can see that the Gram Gramercy Tavern is growing really well. And of course, you can go to total growth as well. And it looks like the Gramercy Tavern has, you know, over 18,000 followers on Facebook, which is really, really uh, exceptional for, for a restaurant, especially in a big city, to stand out. So I think you were going to jump into this next, but someone who was asking, where are you changing this info settings? Yes. So I'm going to let Lonnie quickly talk about this new settings tab. It used to be within each tab. Yeah, so, so another, perhaps one of the biggest changes we've done um, with this redesign is kind of um, put the settings all in one place. So before you kind of had to go to each tab um, to, to access its settings. Um, so now you can access settings all in, in one spot. Um, 
now this isn't a good example of it because this is a an account that has all of their settings completed um, but we still kind of point you to settings if they haven't been completed on each of those pages because I know some people were worried about well you know if I'm on the reviews page I want to make sure I can get to the settings um, and so if you don't have that setting information um, input yet it you it does lead you back to the settings page um, but it also just gives you an easy spot to go in one and done finish all your settings um, so I don't know if you want to jump into the review settings or sorry competition uh, settings yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah I beat you to it so digging into the competition settings so we just showed you that share of voice and these were those keywords that we're pulling in so family dining um, and that's going to be within your local region your local search restaurant speed of service and then of course one thing that of course most clients really like to see is let's put in those three competitors maybe your client or your small business that you're working with as you know really rivals a couple businesses or has three businesses uh, top of mind let's put them in here let's insert their Facebook their Twitter you hit save and uh, you, you can start to monitor what uh, what they're doing online whether it be Facebook Twitter and all this information that you just put in within the settings uh, and then your competition sub tab is what's displaying in here. Now, likewise, if like I mentioned before, we were talking about displaying the the listing sources. Now that we're on the topic, you can go, of course, into settings as well and go into listings. And this is where you're going to be able to check off and uncheck those listing sources. So, like I had mentioned before, um, for a restaurant, you know they have the option to put cars.com in there, but they're not going to be on cars.com it's it's not realistic um, but of course they're going to be want to be on TripAdvisor and Yelp and Zomato and OpenTable so those are going to be listings you're going to want to check off so depending on the taxonomy depending on the industry uh, you have complete control over what you want to showcase to your clients and uh, what your clients potentially want to see as well for for listing sources so We'll just keep moving here um, for, for the sake of time. We've kind of got a lot to go through, but uh, and then we'll dig into a really in-depth um, or as much as we can, the questions at, at the end. So jumping into the mentions tab, we can see that we're pulling in any place that your, your business is mentioned online. Now, the difference between a citation and a mention is these mentions are based off of language or keywords that you and your clients are choosing for the business. Now, um, it's different when a citation is an actual reference to your business website where uh, a mention could be just a simple keyword that you're looking for in, in your local region. So for the Breslin, you know, a mention that you might want to look at is, uh, is scotch or um, the, the lamb chops, of course, obviously a staple ingredient on their menu. You're gonna wanna, you wanna look for those words and you want to monitor what's being said about them in your space. So it's gonna monitor the web, it's gonna social sites like Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, blogs online, news articles, same thing. We're just pulling in those, those keywords that you're, you've deemed uh, important to the business and, and of course your clients have it deemed important to them, to their businesses. So. Um, where you can adjust that, again, back into the settings tab, you go uh, settings tab into mentions and you can enter your keyword search terms. Now, you can see here that the Breslin has a few different names and you're gonna wanna include all of the different associated names with the business, whether it be uh, a nickname, maybe people call the Breslin bar and dining room, the B&B, or maybe they call it just the Breslin. No one ever calls it Breslin Bar and Dining Room or the Breslin Bar. Uh, you wanna include all associated names here because anytime your business is being mentioned or your client's business is being mentioned in this case, you're gonna to wanna to be able to pull in as much mentions uh, that would be associated with them. Now you can put in manager names or CEO names, um, anything that you find would be important to be pulled in as a mention and you can include or not include different, uh, different words. So we're gonna kind of go through that here. The reason you wanna do this is longer tail keywords are gonna provide much more specific results in your mentions. So if I typed in food right now, 
and I hit add, there are going to be a ton of mentions that are going to be absolutely no use to uh, the Breslin, that small business operating within New York, because there are so many things mentioning food online. But if you mention best food, uh, must include New York City, and even that, you know, I, I as I write that, I caution myself. That's going to pull in quite a yeah, quite a yeah. bit. Um, so maybe you want to type in maybe uh, lamb burger. You know that we, you know that the Breslin um, is really popular for the lamb burger. Yeah, let's go lamb burger. So we want to see if anybody else is getting a slice of that pie in New York. And maybe you have another Breslin in Pittsburgh, but you don't want to you don't want to monitor that one here. So you're gonna not include that one. So you must include Lamberger and New York. And you're gonna add that, and so you'll see that that populates here into your uh, your keyword search terms. Now you have up to 25 of these, and I mean once you're monitoring about 25 keywords, that's gonna pull in a whole yeah. bunch of mentions for you for mm -hmm. your clients. We had a question, is there a way to use modifiers or broad match modifiers for keywords? And I think that's what we kind of just went, went over. Um, the includes and must not include. So we have the exclude uh, domains there. Um, a good use of that is, for example, your own content. You don't want to be pulling in um, you know, mentions from your own website. So um, we do see a lot of people put their website in there so you're not pulling in your own content. And then, of course, as well, uh, with mentions, you can add in your keyword searches for Twitter as well. So that this is uh, Twitter specific and you can restrict your results to within a 25 mile radius of that business. So mm -hmm. it is actually, which is nice, you're, you don't have to specify by, uh, by city because if you click this, it's going to do that within 25 mile radius of that local business. Another um, good display of the, the help drawer here, um, you know, putting these settings kind of onto their, their own tabs and having this contextual help drawer. Um, you know, we've really added a lot of different suggestions um, for, you know, the end user to see and kind of use when determining, you know, what search terms to use, for example. Um, and, you know, that should really take some of those questions off of you guys when your clients are coming to being like, what does these search terms mean? What am I supposed to input here? Um, so hopefully that'll help you guys out a little bit. Um, quick question that's a little bit uninvolved, but Malcolm asks, can you make available some mobile images with the new design for us to use on our websites and social media? Um, of course, yeah, we'll definitely make that available to you guys, and that'll most likely um, be going up on the uh, resource center for you guys. Yeah, and we'll make sure that that sort of material, uh, like you had mentioned, Malcolm, is available for that, that release for you guys. Yep. Um, and I think it is really good that Lonnie mentioned this help drawer. You know, we hadn't jumped into this within each tab, but as mentioned before, it's contextual. So it's going to change whether you're in your settings and your sub tab of mentions or you're in your uh, mentions, you're in your mentions tab or your competition tab. It's, uh, it's designed to be interactive with where you are and uh, to kind of create less clutter with all of these information. Exactly, items. yeah. Um, and one more thing to note kind of about that, the help and contextual help, if you can just pop into the listings tab for a quick second, you'll notice that there are a very few select spots that we did keep um, tool tips right within the product. Um, and this is just because we've gotten, um, you know, we've collected a lot of feedback from our trusted testers when doing this redesign. And there were a few spots um, where they had gotten feedback from their clients saying that they got a little stuck on a certain spot, for example, the listing score, because it's not something that is necessarily widely known and people want to know more about that. So we did keep a very few um, important tool tips um, around the product. And that's, like I said, just on spots that we felt needed a little bit more information. All right, so we'll just continue on mentions as we were there. So we went through the monitor mentions, but let's dig into the mentions timeline as well. So looking at the mentions timeline, what this really allows uh, your client or a small business to do or to do on behalf of a, a small business is to kind of flag or understand the sentiment or um, analyze what's being said online and really filter it. So again, that filter icon comes up on the top right and it looks like, you know, this is kind of a neutral view. Uh, the best love version, this is a good, let's go, this is, this is uh, something you wanna see online, but maybe, Maybe this one down here isn't great. Uh, it's something negative about your business. So you have the opportunity here to, to flag all of these mentions and uh, adjust the sentiment. And then, of course, if you want to come in at a later date and just 
pull up all the very negative things that are being said online or all the very positive, uh, give, your, give uh, your small business opportunity to see all the things they're doing really well. You can do that and pull that here. And it just kind of allows you to, to manage and organize all of these mentions because, you know, with pulling in up to 25 keywords, you're going to get a lot of mm -hmm. mentions pulled in. And um, there's really no way to manage or control uh, these super neatly without coming into this mentions timeline and starting to tag them. So you can tag them as well. Um, maybe it's maybe you saw a mention uh, on a blog that mentioned your business very poorly and you wanted to reach out to that person. You're going to start that. You're going to come back to that and uh, kind of mitigate that. Or um, you can tag it as not relevant. Uh, just kind of play around with this and it allows you to, to organize your mentions some more. So once you've monitored those mentions, jump into the mentions timeline and, uh, and take a look. Um, we have a question um, from Malcolm. Why not call it mention sentiment instead of timeline? And that's good feedback. We actually have a dedicated, um, you know, content person on this, on this, uh, this app. So we'll take that feedback back to her. Absolutely. All right. So into the social tab, now you can see that what this is pulling is the associated social accounts that you have uh, deemed in your settings tab. So when you go into settings, you're going to click, you know, connecting these various accounts. So you're going to connect your Facebook, your Twitter. You can see here, obviously at Vendasta, um, as a test account, we've just connected a bunch of, of local accounts here and to, to pull some information. The Breslin is not our business. Um, but uh, once we, you've connected those accounts, you go into the social tab and what the social tab is going to show you is going to pull in a timeline and monitor all of these accounts, all of the social posting. Um, you can obviously take off accounts, certain accounts that you don't want to see, and, uh, and you'll be able to just filter this as you go. Of course, the data as well. Now, if it's pulling in a lot of data, this filter can take a second. So if you have a lot of accounts, um, it's just dependent on, on what you're pulling. Now, that date range can be set. So if you want to check the social monitoring within a week or a month or, or whatever you choose, that's all done here within the filters again on the right hand side. And if you're not looking to do that, feel free to collapse it, get rid of it. Um, a quick question from Chantal. Um, will it give you options for the social platforms or is it only the options you showed us? So right now it is only the options that we showed you. Um, but if there is another social platform that you guys would be interested in adding to this, um, definitely reach out or put it on user voice. We're always looking for, for suggestions from you guys on what to add to the product. And if there's you know a certain account that you'd like to get added on there, definitely um, put it in user voice. That's a great point. All right, so into employee monitoring. So uh, one thing that we find a lot of small businesses really want to do uh, is kind of find out what's being said mm -hmm. by their staff online, whether it's negative or positive. Maybe they're talking about the business um, or maybe they're posting you know, media and stuff that's um, of the business to their social pages. Now, uh, you can uh, pick up certain handles, Twitter handles, and uh, you can pull in employees that you're wi willing to or wishing to monitor or your clients are wishing to monitor. And what you do again is uh, once you go into that connect account, you add their Twitter handle. You do not need any uh, access to the actual page itself. You do not need it login. To be authenticated, yeah. Exactly. No login credentials needed. It is simply going to be monitoring the, the timeline of those employees and what they're posting or tweeting. And then lastly is your social statistics sub tab. Now, once that loads, we've got all your sites, once again, showing an interactive graph, um, your social sites, whether it's Facebook, your Twitter, any of these accounts that you've connected, you'll be able to, again, compare the industry average um, and dig in. So it looks obviously like Todd Scott account has no followers. So um, it's gonna display that here and it'll show that over time. Another place to kind of dig in. So I think one other, a couple other things in terms of design, mm -hmm. um, and maybe I'll get Lonnie to touch on this, but this is very, it's, it's meant to be reactive, interactive to how you want it to look. Now you can collapse this mm -hmm. or you can keep it open at all times and that's your side nav. So if you prefer just having that collapse nav, you're gonna see all these icons. 
And so if you're familiar, you know, this is reviews, listings, competition, so on, so on. If you want to just do it that way, it does provide a really clean look uh, of the data that's within each tab. But you have the, definitely have the option to, to keep it open or obviously once you, you've pulled over to the side, it's going to expand for you anyway. So you're going to know where you're headed. Um, and that's just kind of a, a design perk. Um, one other thing you'll notice, especially if you're um, a user of some of our other products like social marketing, for example, um, is we're, we're really trying to get alignment between our products now when it comes to design. So, you know, we kind of want the same um, experience when you're going from social marketing when you come over to reputation management, um, you know, especially for certain things like connect accounts, for example, we don't want um, users to have to learn how to connect accounts in social marketing and then come over to reputation management and have a completely different experience doing the exact same thing. Um, so that was another big goal. The, the two teams have been working together to make sure that there is an alignment there. Um, and we're really just hoping to keep moving forward with that. Got another good question here. So as we had just kind of finished within the uh, monitoring the employees and kind of um, seeing what they're saying online, we see that uh, maybe not all business owners want to know the latest movie that their employees saw. Now, would it, it would be cool, obviously, as mentioned here, to see the keywords that could be monitored within, uh, within social employees and uh, seeing what people are tweeting by keyword and just kind of flagging that. So that's a really good feedback and that's something that we can take back mm -hmm. to the team. Um, we know that, you know, with some of the language analysis that's done, that uh, it's, it's um, definitely something we can we can take a look into, and we will take a look into that. So we're we're coming up on the end here. So if if you guys have any other questions you want to shoot through quickly, um, we got about five more minutes here. Um, I think there may have been a few that we had missed. I know there was one specifically asking um, about adding in a monitoring source for lawyers.com. Um, if there, like I said before, kind of with the social accounts, if there's any sources that you guys um, you know, think would be really helpful for, for your business or your client's business um, to add, put it in user voice. That's kind of, you know, our, our project managers, that's the one place they look and it really helps kind of mold our, our roadmaps for these products. Um, so any requests like that, definitely get into user voice. Oh, yes, and this is another one that I had missed. What specifically is being searched in um, the search engine share voice measurement? Just keyword, then looking for how often business is showing up, or keyword and business name location, then looking for how often business name is showing up. Um, so for the share of voice for the keywords, it's the keywords, the, um, the service category keywords that you input plus the business name. Where do I find user voice? Um, I can actually get, let me get a link for you guys for that. I don't know if you want to answer some questions, Zach. I'm going to try to find this here. Have the revor reports area been tied to the user now or do they still need to set up reports and who they go to? So the reason that we didn't necessarily talk about the reports here is that for the users who are currently using reports, reputation reports, that's going to remain. But uh, Vendasta has a, a real, uh, we have a goal to really get people using the executive report. We have some really exciting changes coming and um, we're, we're going to design that executive report to be very, very, very valuable. Now we want to people to rely less on the report actually within reputation and rely more on the exec executive report that you're going to get through Vendasta Business Center, if that makes any, uh, any sense to you guys. Um, let me see here. We've got quite a few here, so. Okay, so I don't have a specific link for you guys for um, user voice because it's based on your guys' partner center login. So where you go to access that is in partner center, um, in the navigation. So the bottom left-hand side, you'll see, um, you'll see a link there that says feedback. Um, a, bo a box will pop up and it says post an idea and it says um, when you post an idea your feed to our feedback form others will be able to subscribe to it and make comments so other people can upvote it um, and that's how you um, would post an idea to user voice. Now let me see if I can figure out where you guys can get in there to um, see other people's ideas. In the meantime I'm just going to answer a couple here. So are all the products under this one screen or still different screens per product? So they they're going to be different screens per, per product, but if you have a few of the products, you can navigate uh, 
to them within in the top here. So it depends on what you have activated within the Vendasta marketplace. If you've just got reputation, that's just what you're going to see. And you're going to be uh, in that different screen, obviously, per product. Now, do you have plans to get the new executive report integrated into the reports tab? Uh, I don't believe that's something that is being planned. Now, I can uh, definitely get the the executive report, the team that's working on that, we can definitely reach out to you, Erica, and we can uh, take this conversation yeah. a little bit further. Um, I see Malcolm has asked, is it accurate to say you're following Google's lead in these new design updates? Now, that's an interesting question. Um, um, yeah, we, we were definitely, um, I mean, we use Google's uh, material guidelines when designing these. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's safe to say that, I wouldn't say we're following their lead, but we're using their um, design methodologies for sure. I've just brought up here um, my photo, my contact information, and of course Lonnie's as well. Now the reason we have it up here for you guys is so that if you have any questions, please, you've got our emails there, Lonnie, Lonnie's email and my email. Uh, you can definitely email these to, to us. We're going to get answers for you guys. Um, we want to make this easy for you guys if we haven't got to your question. We see a lot of them kind of flooding in here, and I don't think that we'll be able to get to all of them. So please copy, paste those, bring those to our attention and we're going to do our best to answer everyone's questions here yes. today. I'm sorry, I haven't been able to find, I just want to make sure I, I point you guys in the right direction when it comes to user voice and I haven't been able to find um, the right link for that yet. New, Scott's asking, new look carries across to listing distribution and listing sync also. Just to clarify, Scott, are you asking if the same design is carried into those products. Sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that? Yes, that's what you're asking. So uh, for the time being, that team will, as, as Lonnie had mentioned before, you'll notice that if you are using uh, a variety of Vendasta products, including social marketing, um, we're working to create consistency and alignment in the design of all of our. Yeah, our, we are, yeah. So the, the other products, I mean, um, you know, it just, it's, it's determined on the those products, um, you know, kind of roadmap. But it is um, it is our vision that all products kind of um, align. So it is it is our vision, and we're just we can't give you a date, unfortunately, right now for the other products. I think it's fair to say it's coming, Scott. But uh, yeah, we don't want to speak for when. that those teams that are working on those products to uh, to give you a date because that's definitely not up to to our discretion. <laughs> okay. so. We'd love to say soon, but. <laughs> Um, okay, so I found the um, link here. So if you go to feedback.vendasta.com, um, that's where you can see um, everybody's requests. You can upvote requests that you know speak to you. Um, if you're, as long as you're signed into Partner Center, you can also um, you can either post your feedback right through Partner Center through that feedback button that I was talking about before, or you can do it right through feedback.vendasta.com. And like I said, the, the the project managers really look to this to kind of help. Um, you know, mold our roadmap. So important features for you guys, get in there and input them for sure. Yeah, and be sure if someone else has said something that you're looking for, or maybe it's a new feature yeah. or a fix, uh, be sure to upvote those. So obviously something that has a ton of upvotes is gonna mm -hmm. catch the eye of a product manager and they're gonna be able to, you know, influence the way that the, uh, the product is developed, designed. And we definitely try and I mean, the reason that we have user voice is to listen to you guys, to, to give you a platform to, um, to, to share your, your voice with us. And um, of course, like I said, again, Lonnie and I have our information up here for a reason. We have our contact info up for you guys. Um, if we have a few emails after this webinar, uh, we'll do our best this afternoon Absolutely. to get back to them. If we don't get back to them this afternoon, we will get back to all of you. And uh, we are really happy that everyone was super engaged here today. It's, mm -hmm. it's been nice. One, one last question from Rick, just because I've seen him ask this twice now. Um, the review widget is available now. It is actually available in the old design. So same thing, if you go to the reviews tab in the old design, there is a um, review display widget there that you can access and put onto your client's website. <laughs> Perfect. We're Perfect. glad you found it, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else, Zach? I think, that's, I think we got to wrap it up. Got to get to the next meeting. Yeah, so Lonnie and I are going to take off here for our next meeting. But like we had mentioned, please uh, jot down our contact information. It's up yes. there for you guys. And uh, email us some questions, and we will get back to you as soon as we can.
Yes. Um, thanks everybody so much for joining us. Yeah, have a wonderful day, you guys, and, and thanks for joining us here today to go through the new reputation. We appreciate it.